kick straight off with uh, with Soccer Aid. Obviously, it's not your your first rodeo, but you did miss out last year. So just explain why you had to skip last year. Uh, we were filming Line of Duty. We had picked up, uh, uh, we had to abandon filming, uh, obviously, during the pandemic. And then when we came back to shoot the rest of it, um, we were under such uh, strict um, protocols, you know, as you have to be to make sure these things get through. So it was just, and even in, in the best of times, it's it's tough to get away from filming uh, to to make it. Um, so just last year, there was no chance. I watched along though, and good to see uh the lads retained their title. Um, so no, I'm absolutely chuffed to be able to get back again this year. How confident are you then that the the, the rest of the world eleven can can win again? You've been on the winning side twice, haven't you? Are you confident this time? It's. I mean, I'm just chuffed. I mean, somebody who's a who's a mad football fan, you know, uh, look, we can't forget the reason why we're there, and it's it, it's an incredible event that's raised tens upon tens of millions of pounds to help kids across the world. I mean, it's an incredible thing, but just as somebody from a football background to, to share a pitch with all these legends, to watch them do their magic and training, all that stuff is it's an absolute treat. But yeah, I mean, every year, I mean, when you've got the, the fastest man alive or the fastest man to ever live up front, you've always got a chance. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm really excited to get back. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's the last one though, I think um, two years ago I was 35, but it's just with my job, um, we've, we've got so much insurance around it. You're not allowed to really train or play any games or anything or build it. So it's I usually turn up pretty pretty out of shape in terms of like football fitness. And the last one, but being younger and stuff, I usually kind of fall into. It. But the last one is when I, I really really felt it. I, I felt all my 35 years um, at the last one, and this time it's two years older again. A severe lack of training, so the, there's a lot of fear this one. But again, a, a lot of excitement. Is there anyone that you're particularly excited or, or like really, really, really nervous to be playing alongside? I missed, um, I, like, I missed last year and, and I thought it was it was brilliant to see Wayne Rooney there. You know, I mean, I think he's England's all-time great school scorer. And I think in time, he's still revered as a player, but I don't think he still he quite gets the credit he deserved. I mean, he was and he was somebody, I think he's a year or two younger than me and seeing somebody coming up with that talent as we're sort of grown up at the same age as you was was immense. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what he gets up to in Paul Scholes, I think, who's an absolute legend. And I played against uh, Paul in another charity game years ago and um, we are both playing centre mid and he took a bad touch and I nearly got it. And then it happened again. He took another bad touch and I nearly got it. And it took to the third time for me to realise he was doing it on purpose. Um, and it just shows you just how far ahead they are in your stuff. So again, just to be amongst all these people is, is amazing. Is there anyone you kind of really want to take out with a bit of a dirty tackle? Uh, they became quite known for my dirty tackling in this game. So no, I might try, I'm getting myself a reputation where I think somebody's going to end up scudding me one. Um, and I think as well with a lot of these things, people think it's me trying to be tough. It's just me unfit. Um, and it's the only way I can get a tackle. And I'm sure there'll be, because that's one of the great things about it is um, as much as all charity games, but you play in a lot of these charity games and they feel like a charity game. This doesn't, this feels, does, and the build up of the week and the training, there's always a little bit of needle that starts, you know, the, the sort of wind ups between teams and both sides are desperate to win, you know, so it definitely feels like there's a lot more on the line. So it might look a bit slow when you're watching on the telly, but when you're playing in it, it feels pretty intense. There's a few characters. There's more for that. I think Bradley Bradley Walsh is always Bradley's great fun. Um, he's a funny, funny man. Um, uh, and always you always uh, find Big Sam at the bar. Um, it, and that's what's 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 really good for me. Like when you're sitting at these legends at sort of one one o'clock in the morning, having a beer at the hotel bar, and you get a few stories out of them. So I'm I'm just the same as any other fan. Like. I want to hear all the gossip and all that kind of thing. So that that stuff's a real joy for me. How are you fancying Scotland's chances against England on, on Friday? It's an epic game. It's a funny one because after 23 years, you know, in some ways you're kind of just, you were just happy that we're there. But now now that we're in it, and it being the sort of precedence that Northern Ireland set the last one, that three points can possibly get you to the knockout stage, something Scotland have never done kind of feels like it's there for the taking. It does give you the fear a wee bit when you see the likes of Fodden and Sancho and Sterling and just the speed these guys have going forward. Um, but I think um, just with the rivalry aspect, it'll, it'll be a different game. And the last couple of games, we've not been too far away. I think you, you guys equalised in the last minute, uh, the last time we played them. 
Although the game before that, he gave us a bit of a drubbing at Wembley. So, ugh, with any Scottish fan, I'm wildly optimistic and you sort of hope for the best, prepare for the worst. Um, and you just kind of hope going into the last game we've got something to play for but I genuinely think we have a decent side you know we've got some good players playing at a high level now I think Tierney uh, KT for us was a huge huge miss we miss his energy and stuff so if Kieran's fit I think we'll be a different team um, yeah fingers crossed It meant a lot to you didn't it when when Scotland qualified did you get into trouble for, for interrupting line of duty filming? <laughs> No, because I don't think they had any. They knew they were actually really good to me. Where we set up base in a bar nearby, so they had the game on, um, and we were on a night shoot. So they kind of gave me till ten o'clock to watch the game. But in typical Scotland fashion, we lost a goal in the last minute, which meant we had to go extra time. So I was all ready to celebrate in the bar, and then they said, "Right, we need to start filming now." So the only access I had was literally Arnott's car radio. Um, so coming in and out those things, but then it went to penalties. It seemed to just go on and on forever. But no, I think everybody was just was just so chuffed, to, um, chuffed for me. And you know, it's it's um it's a, we're a really tight knit bunch. So I think they knew how much it meant to me. So Steve Arnott was listening to the Scotland game on on the car radio. He was, yeah, on the way. And it's a funny one as well because it's um I had now been out without spoilers. It's it's to see where we go in to kind of find out whether Kate has his great partner and best pal is dead or not and trying to focus on those two things at the same time was pretty wild um, and I think the first take when I come in to old fear after it it was hard to get the smile off my face um, but it was um, yeah it was, a, it was a pretty epic night. You left behind a football career to, to, to be an actor but if looking back if you had the choice with all the success that you've had with Line of Duty or if you could have played for Scotland in a major tournament which would you take? Yeah see that's that's the it's kind of it's a difficult question to answer just because I left football because I mean literally I retired now to retire 20 years ago I, I stopped playing when I was 17 um, because I kind of felt I knew my limitations and, and that's not always a, a bad thing you know because no one had, I didn't think I was ever going to get higher than sort of Scottish championship level but I felt I had a chance with acting so I think knowing that that could have been my level at, at that gave me sort of the confidence to go and try this other thing. Um, but if you're talking that I had the chance to play for Celtic and the chance to play for Scotland, then nah, acting wouldn't have come into my into the equation. I'd have been fully focused on that. But, you know, I've been, I'm very lucky to be in a job that, that I love, um, traveling the world, meeting people, um, working all these crazy locations. Um, and at 37, I still feel a relatively young actor. Um, I feel like I've got a lot of time in front of me and if I was a footballer I'd be an old man right now um, so I think I think it's worked out well you had any sort of Euros banter with the Line of Duty co-stars? Yeah, Jed was giving me a bit um, uh, 80, 80s um, I think because obviously we've got the Celtic connection Scots, Irish we're always backing each other anyway Vicky's the most diplomatic and lovely person everywhere she just rooting for everybody she just wants everybody to win and she's in this thing because her partner Johnny's Welsh and I'm Scottish so she's just kind of wanting everybody to be happy yeah but Jed Jed gives me a little bit and it was kind of annoying in that he uh, he was saying best of luck today um, and, but obviously not for Friday we'll see you Friday but then it becomes that condescending kind of oh I'm lucky today I don't want that I want wound up because that's worse when, when people start feeling sorry for you I don't enjoy that kind of thing. Um, yeah, but there'll be plenty of that flying around on, on Friday. Um, yeah, he's because he, he actually, one of Jed's things, there's a, there's a line in Line of Duty where Hastings says to Steve, um, when after he's messed up on one of his several occasions, um, he said, you were your team were bossing the game, son, and you went away and gave a penalty. And that line was in direct reference to when I gave away a penalty in soccer aid. So he's, uh, he's not adverse to a wee bit of a wind-up. Speaking of line, line of duty, congratulations on the TV Choice Awards uh, nominations. But you are oh, up thank against you. you are up against Adrian, aren't you? So, so who are you betting on? Um, I would never bet against the gaffer. You know, it's been ten years to get my to get Stevie's promotion, and I think I'd be swiftly demoted if, if I won it. Um, although in saying that, I think Adrian might have won one before. Um, you know what? It's just it's really nice to be to be nominated for these things because. 
what has really made this show is the fans, you know, coming back year after year, sort of the support we've had, uh, the word of mouth that spread on social media. And now in our sixth series, when a lot of people, you kind of feel like you're on the downward spiral, we're literally bigger than ever. Um, and that's just due to the sheer amount of people who are tuning in. And with the TV Choice Awards, it's, it's voted for by the fans again, because I think some of the more established awards kind of don't... Um, don't tend to like us very much. Um, and I, I, I couldn't ex- understand why. Maybe it's maybe it is that people don't like the popular shows or stuff. So the stuff that comes from the fans really, really does mean a lot to us. So, I mean, for everybody who went out and voted for the show, again, thanks very much. All this stuff is all a bit surreal. You know, it just seems to be something um, new every day. Somebody else that's watching this stuff, you know, but it's just, I think we're just happy that anybody likes it, you know, um, and I think with everything that's going on, again, with this pandemic, I'm sorry for people if they're tuning up, just keep mentioning it. I know it, can, it drives everybody up the wall, but I think we were just happy that we could give anybody a distraction. You know, if, if, any, if it gives anybody, whether it be the Queen or the wee, the wee lollipop woman on the street, gives them something else to talk about, something else to focus on, I mean, that's that's what we're going to get into this job for. You know, it's it's an entertainment business, you know, we you can take it too serious at times, but but it is it's escapism. And if it can give somebody else, people, something to focus on in a time like this, then no, we're just chuffed to bits. What can you tell us about series seven? We're all <laughs> well. I can't even tell you what's happening yet. Um, I think, look, it it was it was such a wild ending to the way the show just became this sort of huge machine that sort of got out of control. Um, I think because it started in lockdown and people got really invested in it, which was brilliant. But by the end of it, you know, it's um, it's, it's one of those things that I was really, I was loving the, the reactions to people and, and how much they'd taken to it. But it was also for all of us, it's a really anxious time just because you're so under the spotlight. You know, everything we do, everything we say, it's sort of, you can, you're very aware of being followed by paps and all that kind of thing. So for all of us, uh, involved it was a relief that, that it finished um and then this a sort of mad reaction to the ending you know I think for everybody I think fans included Dan does everybody needs a bit of time away from it um and that's also something that I think has made uh the show a success that we always like there isn't always a series immediately after it you know we've always taken time between it and after each one Jed always takes um a right good few months to decide whether he wants to go again. I mean, in some ways he might think it's a perfect ending or as with anything with Jed, there was a, a few loose ends um, that could that could, we could always address. So I think at the minute we're just sort of trying to let everything cool and then sort of take a decision um, in the cold light of day when when everything's really calmed down a bit. I mean, but it's been, it's been fantastic to see the response we've got and to see that there is still an appetite for more after doing it for 10 years is, is really heartening. But I think just everybody, as included, uh, we just need a bit of time away from it.